Hey, what's up guys? It's Still Rain and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be looking at the Esheen TX5258 72 channel Smart Audio VTX. Now, uh, before I get started, I'd like to say thank you for Banggood. They sent this in uh, for testing. So we'll go ahead and get into it. Uh, first of all, I think this is going to be a pretty good, this is a pretty good option if you guys are considering or building on a budget. It comes in at two prices. Now, a lot of people have gripes about ordering from China, how it takes a while. But you also uh, get a few dollars off if you do it that way. So it, go, it comes for about $14.99 if you order from their Chinese warehouse. But you also have the option, which is good about products like this, that you could order it here locally in the U.S. for $16.99. So personally, I would choose that option because, as you'll see, this thing comes with a lot of features, and it's pretty feature-packed. So we'll go ahead and get into it. Uh, first of all, one of, one of the things it supports is uh, the 25 milliwatts, 200 milliwatts, 500 milliwatts, and 800 milliwatts. So if you're looking for a VTX that you know is relatively cheap, that does you know a complete power range and possibly even long range, this would almost be perfect for you. And coming up here shortly, I'll be testing out uh, all these power outputs on different channels. Now it does support NTSC and PAL, and like I said, it, it does have smart audio, as you can see right there. It does have a smart audio pin, so I'm not quite sure if that's going to be compatible with Betaflight 3.3. Uh, I guess we'll just have to see. I'm not sure whether or not, uh, and I highly doubt it, but who knows if Isheen has paid uh, TBS for the smart audio protocol. So this might work up until Betaflight 3.3, but I guess we'll just have to see. Now, 72 channels, it supports bands A, B, E, F, R, U, O, L, and H. Now, you got to be really careful about what channels you select because a lot of these channels, especially in the U.S., are really high or most of them are really low, and those are designated for different things, so it would be illegal for you to transmit on them. So just make sure you check out the frequency charts and local laws and regulations in your country. So uh, it also supports an, an input voltage, DC input volt, voltage of 7 to 24 volts. So, you know, basically anywhere from, I'd say, maybe a, a high, high charge 2S, I'd, I'd mo most likely go with 3S, all the way up to a 6S. So pretty wide voltage input. It weighs in at 8.25 grams. Of course, that's without the antenna. With the antenna, it, it bumps it up. I guess it really depends on what antenna it, of course, it comes with one of these rubber ducky antennas that are pretty much useless, so don't suggest using one of those. Uh, uh, like I said, dimensions, it's actually relatively small considering how powerful it is, 800 milliwatts, as you can see the heat sink there. Um, it is, let me see here, it's uh, 31 millimeters long by 21 millimeters wide, and it's about 5 millimeters uh, uh, tall. So what I also like about this VTX as well as you see, it's got a microphone right up here. Also has an LED display, so with a button, of course, right here, so you can change your channel, band, and power outputs. You know, really simple and easy if you don't want to run smart audio, and even if the smart audio somehow doesn't work on the new Betaflight 3.3 that's going to be released coming up here shortly, I'm guessing within the next month, you still have the option to change it here. So that's, that's pretty good. Uh, it says it has overheating protection. And it all and it states that if you don't have the antenna on here, that the it has thermal protection where it'll throttle itself back or shut itself down, so you don't have to worry about burning this out, which is you know is pretty good. Um, it's glad I, I'm glad they thought about that. They also state in their description that this handles a 0 0.01 milliwatt. Uh, I guess it'd be like a pit mode. Uh, I'm gonna have to test that out and see if that's true. I'm guessing you're only going to be able to get to that through smart audio and your uh, your pop-up OSD, so we'll have to see about that. And the one thing I really do not like about this VTX, and if you're listening, Esheen, or whoever makes Esheen, get rid of the RPSMA. RPSMA is just a thing of the past. At the minimum, it should have SMA, because that's what most guys run. I mean, yeah, you could get an adapter, but then you're going to run into some some possible power losses or things of that nature. So I'd really like to see this kind of VTX come with like a MMCX type connector. I think that would be perfect. 
and you know it wouldn't be hard to do it all. MMCX is kind of the new wave of the future and kind of the way everything is going. But I think at minimum it should have at least just SMA. This RP SMA is just, I mean, most guys don't even want to use that that connection there. So well, that, that's pretty much going to be it with the boring stuff, guys. I'm going to go ahead and cut away now, and we're going to go ahead and test this VTX's power outputs on on different levels. All right, guys, we're back, and we're going to go ahead and start doing the power testing. Now, before I get started, if you have any questions about how I've done any of my setup or testing, please check the video's description below. But pretty much in a nutshell, this VTX is going to be powered from a full-charged battery, 16.8 volts, and it's powered directly from the LiPo itself through this PDB here. So I'm also, what I'm going to be doing, and if you haven't seen any of my other VTX reviews, what happens is I'll be testing it on its lowest uh, power setting, which is 25 milliwatts. I'll be testing it on the center frequency of uh, 5,800 megahertz. And I'll also be testing race band 1 at 5,658 megahertz and race band 8 at 5,917. That way we kind of get an idea of the whole spectrum since the power output of VTXs do tend to jump. Uh, usually the lower in the bands and channels that you go. So, and then as well as doing 25 milliwatts testing, we're also going to be bumping it up to the 800 milliwatts, its max output, and then testing it on the center frequency and race band one and eight. So we're going to go ahead and get started, plug in this thing. Right off the bat, you can see it's sitting at F4, flashing at one, which means 25 milliwatts. And as you can see on the readout, it's putting out way less than it should be. It's putting out 6.05 milliwatts. So what we're going to go ahead and do now, we're going to go ahead and move to race band one. All right. There, it finally decided to go. All right, guys, as you can see, we're sitting on race band one right now at 25 milliwatts, and it's putting out around 6.81 milliwatts. So slight jump, but not a very good improvement. So we'll go ahead and move to race band eight. Okay, so it's actually gone up a little bit in the power output, still way less than 25 milliwatts. It's sitting at 7.44 milliwatts of output on race band eight. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is stop the video. I'm gonna go ahead and let this thing cool down for a little bit. It's not even really that warm at all right now, but still outputting way less than it should. So we'll go ahead and unplug everything, let it cool down before we do the 800 milliwatts test. All right, guys, we're back. It's now had about five minutes to cool down. Uh, cool to the touch, ambient room temperature. We're going to go ahead and test the 800 milliwatt setting of this VTX. So we'll go ahead and plug in here. Sitting at its center frequency right now of uh, F4, 5800 megahertz on 800 milliwatt setting. And as, as you can see, putting out 223 milliwatts and dropping quickly because of temperature. So putting out a lot less. I'll let you guys make the de decision for yourself, but as you can see, it's dropping pretty quickly. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is go to the race band channels. Now it's sitting at race band four. We're going to get it to the race band eight here. All right. Sitting at race band eight, so it jumped up a little bit, 258.52 milliwatts, still way short of 800 milliwatts. As you can see, it's heating up, but really, I mean, it hasn't even been powered on that long. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is go to race band one. Race band one is coming in a little bit lower. It's coming in at about 205.35 milliwatts on its 800 milliwatt setting. So, you know, I'll let you guys make the decision and choice for yourself. As you can see, it's not really putting out what it's stating. It's not even that hot yet, not even hot to the touch. So really no excuse. I could see if it was left on for, you know, five minutes. And right now it's just barely warm to the touch. So, I mean, that's even then thermal regulation doesn't, doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, it might increase or decrease by 50 milliwatts, but I've never really seen more of a fluctuation than that uh, with, with heat, you know. And uh, if anybody has any questions... Once again, please look at the video's description. This meter has been tested against uh, some baseline tests on two different TBS unifies, one a unify race and the unify high voltage. 
and spot on readings. So I'll let you guys make the decision for yourself. Um, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please share, subscribe and like, and if you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please leave them in the normal place below. I'll see you guys next time.